publishing with Quark Express. My name is Martin Turner and today we're going to be looking at indexes. Now uh, the index is a very powerful feature but it does not take the place of a human doing the indexing and you need to think carefully about your indexing strategy before you begin. Now uh, let's go to the screen and um, what we've got is this, this book we've been looking at before. Uh, and it's got a lot of, of uh, it's a historical novel, it's got a lot of, uh, uh, of uh, interesting names in it, real places. Um, I'm not suggesting you'd really want to have an index in a historical novel, some people do, but I think it's a little bit overblown. But let's say, uh, let's uh, go to the index over here. And uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to look at, at some of the basic indexing features. I'm not going to go into uh, enormous depth because there's quite a lot here. But um, there's two fundamental concepts you have to get your mind around. And if you do, uh, everything else will start to make sense. So um, the first thing is that uh, there are entries and references. That is, that is the, the most fundamental thing uh, about the index. Entries and references. Let's go back to the screen and look at those. So um, what we're seeing here, uh, let's take the, ref the, the entry of Lindsay. Uh, Lindsay's a, a historic place. And over here on the uh, index uh, palette, you find that palette in window index, you'll see that there is add and add all. Now we're gonna do add all. Um, it doesn't come that, that often. Uh, and we find that on page 6, 98 and 123, it's added all three things. Now. Um, let's delete that for a second, uh, if we're going to do it again. On the, um, uh, on the Lindsay we've got, if we just make that uh, entry style bold italic and now do add all, then the entry style, uh, the reference, will be... Uh, and we can just click through there, it'll, it'll find them for us, it's quite useful that way. It will be the same for each of those. So let's go and build that index now, it won't be much of an index, but we're going to go there, build index, uh, and it's going to offer um, replace, replace existing index, yes, usually, and letter headings, I usually take that. I'm going to put it as title, uh, we're going to go with chapter title page, we're going to go, the first level uh, will make index level one, and the second level, index level two. There is no level two right now, but we are taking the nested index. Entire book is for when you're using the book feature of Quark Express. So we're not doing that right now. It's all in one book. We've got everything's in the one document now. Okay. And um, uh, what you'll see is Lindsay 6, 98, and 1, 2, 3. But in a real academic index, this is not an academic book, we might want to say that this reference is really important. That's going to be bold italic. This one... Uh, is merely a regular, uh, and this one is going to be a regular too. Let's build an index again. Build index. Um, see, it's kept all of my settings, uh, and uh, okay, that didn't do what I was expecting. Uh, so we've got to check, click on edit first to actually edit that. So we're going to change that to uh, normal, and we're going to change that one uh, again to uh, we're going to make that sound small, actually. I can unclick that, so turning editing off. For some reason, you have to do edit for this, otherwise it, it, it misbehaves. Now, build index. Uh, we're going to go there. And now you'll see I've got these three different entry styles. So uh, I can't go back to this and change those references. I can change the level. And I can change the way it's sorted, interestingly. So I could, I could actually have that appear. We need some more references before we get there. But I have that appear in a different order from the one you'd expect, uh, for example, because uh, it's, uh, uh, whatever reason, uh, Smith GA or GA Smith. Um, but uh, yeah, okay, so let's, let's do a few more. So I'm gonna go to Viraconium, um, Viraconium, uh, Cornovii actually we sort of jump there. So um, let's go to this, uh, um, yeah, uh, 
yeah, we'll come right to the end now. Um, and uh, we'll come back to uh, Lindsay. Uh, and right at the end of the document, we're going to find, uh, I hope, Viriconium. Um, uh, right with that index. So, uh, yeah, let's go right down there. Um, okay, so Viriconium, I'm going to uh, add all, but Viriconium is going to come up quite a lot. So I'm going to take the reference, the style is going to be uh, bold italic for all of them, but I'm going to say uh, to end of, actually let's not do that, let's, do, let's go to, to style, next, uh, chapter number. Okay, so what this is going to do, it's going to reference uh, the first time it appears in that chapter, but it's not going to keep listening because viriconium occurs ever such a lot. So I'm going to add all now, uh, and you'll see it's found 28 references, but uh, it's it's given them in this way. Now, um, you'll see that some of these are not very helpful. 31 to 39, 32 to 39, 33 to 39, 34 to 39, 36 to 39. We're going to delete these. Uh, we don't want these references uh, because they're just going to get in the way. Uh, and it's going to allow us to remove the reference, but not the index entry. If we want to remove the index entry, we've got to click on here. Now, this is really important because indexes, if you just do them mechanically, get completely out of hand. Uh, and you have thousands of references to common words. Um, it used to be a sort of a whole profession of indexing books. Um, uh, and what we actually want to do is just have a few. I've, I've done a few of those. Let's build that index now. Uh, and uh, off we go. Uh, so we've now got two things. And uh, you see it's now doing 31 to 39, 53 to 67, and then we didn't, uh, we didn't fix it up. Actually, it's, it's, it's intelligently fixed it up, so I didn't need to do all that deleting. Uh, you'll see that I've got the index in columns. I've, I've decided to use column uh, flow on my index style, just so that it, it ends up in, in three columns uh, rather than uh, filling up loads of paper. Okay, um, Viriconium is actually uh, the same place as another place, which is called uh, Kerguricon. Now I'm going to go, okay, here it is. So uh, we'll go to Kerguricon now, and I'm going to, um, uh, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to add all, but only to chapter number. Uh, but now the last Viriconium, or this one in fact, I'm going to put in, I'm going to change that to uh, uh, scope cross-reference. And we're now going to make that C Kaguricum. Okay, let's see what happens with that. So I'm going to stop editing that. So uh, let's try it. Uh, so we'll build the index uh, and off we go. Now, at the end of Viriconium, we now have, if you can see over here, C Kaguricum. I probably went a little bit to town on my column flow columns there. So we'll just uh, shift that over there and um, we'll make it, uh, I think, maybe just two columns. Um, that's a little bit better. So now, as you often see in indexes, you see Kerguricon. And Kerguricon uh, lists itself uh, in those ways and it makes more sense. Okay, what else can we do? Now, um, uh, let me come a little bit further up and um, we're going to see Cuthbert, who is uh, the principal character. He's going to be on every page. Well, I really don't want a reference to Cuthbert. I don't want to lose him either. So let's do suppress page number. Uh, and obviously that makes no difference what the entry style is now. And we'll just do Cuthbert in there. But um, uh, what about this? Uh, we've also got... Um, uh, a pseudonym of Cuthbert, which is uh, Bertus, if I remember uh, correctly. Uh, so, going to find... No. Um, okay, Bertus. So here's Bertus. He's not a real person. So we're going to make that a second level. Uh, and uh, we are now uh, going to... Um, uh, press page numbers. Actually, we'll include the page number uh, 
uh, to uh, style a uh, new chapter, uh, chapter number, uh, and now we're going to add all. Uh, and uh, you'll see that Bert just comes now as a second level. Now, let's have a quick look um, at what that produces. Um, so, off we go. Uh, so, Cuthbert uh, doesn't, we're not going to show every page Cuthbert's on, but the pseudonym Bertus now comes in on a second level. That's a different style sheet. I can have up to uh, four levels, uh, and I've given it a different style sheet name. And so, where it's Bertus, we do get the page numbers uh, in those chapters. And that's all fine and good. Well, what else should we look at? Um, uh, that, as you can see, has come in there. Um, you can also drag things to be underneath each other, uh, and you can also uh, sort as. Now, sort as is when you want Smith, comma, GA, not GA Smith. Um, uh, okay, uh, not particularly helpful in an Anglo-Saxon novel because they don't have very much uh, in the way of those names, but uh, there it is. Um, if you recall these uh, under here, what you're seeing is the result of uh, uh, AthenaSoft's uh, autocorrect XT, which we talked about the other week. Now, um, just one more thing, because um, it may be that you're going to end up having several indexes because your, your academic uh, document, it's not a novel, it's an academic thing, has got quite a lot going for it. And it's, it may be that you actually don't want an index, you want a glossary. Well, um, there's going to be an easier way to do a glossary than using the index. So let's come back to the top um, where we've uh, got some stuff going on. And uh, let's say that... Um, uh, I should be using the lists here because I'm going to use the list. I'm going to create a style called glossary. Uh, and that style is going to be language none. Okay. Uh, so um, what can we see here? Uh, well, we're not going to explain the Ides, um, but uh, it may be that I want to explain who Chu is. So I'm going to just ignore uh, all for two. Uh, I don't want to get interference there. And I am now going, uh, I'm not, oh, I've got the comma in there. I'm not going to index two. I'm going to glossarize him. So all I'm going to do is click on there for glossary. Um, actually, glossary should be uh, based on normal, um, not based on, okay. And I'm also going to glossarize Terp, which is a Frisian word, which you probably won't use very often, uh, but you might want to know what it is. Uh, and I'm going to glossarize uh, Skeata, um, which again, uh, let's just uh, ignore. Um, and Skeata, uh, we're going to glossary. And now I'm going to create a list. Uh, so we've already used a list for our table of contents, now I'm going to create a new list called Glossary. Oops, um, that wasn't clever. Uh, let's try that again. Called Glossary. And all we're doing is we are going to glossarize. We're going to put it in alphabetical order. We're going to use numbering text only. We don't want the page numbers and we're going to format as normal. And that's going to be fine. And uh, now uh, this will compile uh, a uh, as we go, a list of things which I want to explain later. And then uh, when I'm ready, uh, I'm going to go to the end of the document and uh, we'll just put the glossary in here. Um, uh, call it glossary. Uh, in fact, um, and there we are. And I can then, uh, uh, an Anglo-Saxon or an early... Uh, Saxon coin, uh, terp, uh, a uh, man-made uh, hill uh, on which a Frisian village stands, and uh, two uh, being uh, an early version of the uh, Norse god Tyre. That's actually totally inaccurate. It's the Anglo-Saxon uh, Anglo-Saxon god of war. Um, so there we are. Um, 
So the, the glossary can work in a different way for us. We can have as many glossaries as, as we want. Now we can have different indexes. We don't have to replace the index, but we can only have one managed at a time. So that's a slightly destructive process. Uh, but glossaries, you can have as many as you want. You can have uh, a gazetteer of all the place names. Uh, you can have a glossary of what the words mean. You can have all kinds of things. So I just in that wanted to introduce to you how indexes work a little bit. The key thing to remember is that you, you, you click on the uh, pencil to edit something and the entries and the references are edited separately. If you remember that, then you will get to where you're going to get to. There is more stuff to experiment with, which I didn't show. But if you don't remember that, you will get hopelessly lost as I've done on a number of occasions. And of course, with deadlines looming, that's not where you want to be. Well, that's all we've got time for. Uh, this week. Uh, thank you again very much for uh, watching. Uh, my name is Martin Turner, author of Desktop Publishing with Cork Express 2017. Uh, and uh, in the meantime, until next time, I wish you happy corking. <laughs>